Hello and welcome to Board Game Gumbo. Today we're unboxing Tortuga 2199 by Gray Fox Games. Uh, before we get to the game itself, you'll see that we do have the playmat for the game as well. It's a rather large playmat, but it's very nice. It's not stitched edged, but it's good quality. And as you can see, the artwork is really well represented on the mat itself. You can see, kind of see these hexagonal shapes on the map itself, those are the different locations in the game. So the mat itself just kind of helps you to orient all the different pieces of the game and provides spots for all the market cards and different things that you're gonna be using during the course of the game. So this is a Kickstarter edition of the game, as you can see down here. So it has a few extra pieces, player markers, some extra ships. There's actually an expansion that came in this box because of this Kickstarter edition and some additional cards. Let's go ahead and see what's inside. So our Tortuga 2199 is a game for two to four players, plays in 60 to 90 minutes, and it's a deck building and area control game. So here's our rule book. So this will be the main board, depending on the number of players that you have, and players will be interacting with those locations or with uh, other players. And then there are quite a few cards. Most of them, some of them will be in your starting hand. Some will be in various markets for you to purchase during the course of the game. So you can see that the board has a variable setup depending on the number of players. Here you see the different markets. So these different areas around the board uh, give you access to specific markets. And then over here, we have sort of the, the main market that everybody has access to. Round structure is fairly simple. You will have a hand of five cards, possibly six because you can reserve cards between rounds and you will play those cards. And they'll typically give you one of two resources, either crypto or money or maneuver. Crypto is used to buy additional cards and maneuver is pretty much used for everything else. So movement as well as combat are using maneuver. And then of course, there's some cards that have special abilities, may allow you to draw additional cards destroy cards from your hand and so on. Pretty standard for a deck building game. Um, of course, with the, the reserve action is a nice uh, touch. There are two ways to win the game. Essentially, if you acquire a certain number of influence, you will win. And then the other way is to control Tortuga, which is the center location of the board. And if you do that, every other player gets to end that round. So they get a equal number of turns essentially. And then if you have the most influence, you will win or really anybody who has the most influence. The person who controls Tortuga at the end of the game doesn't necessarily win unless they also happen to have the most influence. Little reference in the back, some optional rules and that's it. Then we have our rule book for our little expansion that came free again because this is a Kickstarter edition, adds new cards, a new spaceship. Your spaceships do have uh, special abilities, which is kind of nice. So we'll take a look at those when we get to those components. All of our punch board for our different resources, pretty standard here. Everything punches out nicely. It's nice and thick. There's no problems there. We have here, these purple squares are hunt tokens. So there are monsters that you can go out and hunt throughout the course of the game, and they will give you a certain number of influence for defeating them. For instance, this one is worth two influence, but they're going to be face down on the game board. And the first thing you have to do is you have to go scout them, which is basically go to the location they're at and spend a maneuver to look at them and then you get to put one of your tokens on it saying you looked at it. And then from then on, you can go and try to defeat that monster. And you can see that there's quite a few of them ranging from two maneuver all the way up to 11 to defeat. Some more resources here. These are just influence tokens. So again, that's one of the ways to win the game is by having enough influence. So here are all our ships and the rest of our components. You can see that the ships are quite nice. 
all in different colors, so easy to distinguish one player from another, just at a glance. All unique sculpts. This is the expansion ship. So you have a retail copy and you want the expansion. This is the ship that'll come with it. And then we've got a few more as well. These aren't highly detailed, but I think they get the job done and they're gonna look really nice on the board. Then we have all of our tiles. So this will make up the game board and there's pretty much a, a set um, way to arrange these depending on player count. You can see that some of the spots actually have are double layered because they have little tokens that will sit in there and those tokens you can gain throughout the course of the game. So for instance, this is a one influence token. You control this area, you have this token unless somebody takes it from you. There's also a credit token, which essentially just gives you one money that never goes away. However, you'll notice that there are numbers on the outside of these tiles. That is how you control an area. So say I was the first person here and I wanna take control of this area, I have to have spend three or more influence. And then I'll put one of my cubes here denoting that I've taken control of it. Now, some player could come along and try to take it from me, but now they have to spend four maneuver. And that's assuming I'm not there, because if I am, obviously I'm going to defend my territory. Uh, the tiles are nice. We've got a little discoloration around the edges. Uh, it's not major, but it's somewhat noticeable. As you can see, there's quite a few different little special powers to these areas. They're not all the same and they do have different levels to control them. Then we have player pieces here. So these are essentially um, player markers that you will use to designate when you have done something. So this one this light blue one would obviously belong to the player using this ship. And so for instance, if you take over an area, you'll put your little guy there. And if you are scouting a hunt tile that's on the board, you put your little guy on top of it. Now these are part of the Kickstarter edition. You can see that there's about a half, half dozen per color. If you have the retail edition, these will just be cubes, essentially, instead of these little turrets. And then the rest are all of our cards. This is a deck building game. So of course, there are quite a few cards to look at. So we have cards for a couple different things. There's, of course, the main market. And there's also those little side markets side locations that have specific cards to them. But we also have cards for the ships, which are right here in front. So again, all the ships have a special ability. The sting right here allows you to reserve a card from your hand and draw a card to replace it, essentially. If I can get my camera to focus real quick. There we go. And then it says you may reserve up to two cards in your cargo bay and draw up to two reserve cards per turn. So you have an extra card. Here is our starting cards. So starting maneuver cards just give you one maneuver. Starting mining cards give you one crypto. And we should have enough of those for each player, but it looks like these aren't quite in order. This is probably the expansion cards since the ship was in this one. Each player will also start a boost with a booster card. This doesn't have maneuver, but it does allow you to move. So you can move with maneuver, but booster specifically allows you to move itself. Then we have some additional bad guys and then some additional cards, which will get added in to the market. 
And again, this is the expansion pack. And finally, a little cheat sheet. Let's see what else we have. So this is gonna be our main deck of cards for the base game. Again, maneuver and mining cards, as well as booster cards for each player, and then the different ships in the game. So here we have the sailing ship. There we go. Has extra movement. The galleon gives you a credit and lets you draw a card. Humpback gives you a maneuver. This one lets you discard a card from your hand, or probably means destroy actually, and then draw a card. And then here are some basic market cards. You can see the cost in the top right. And then more market cards here, get into the more expensive ones. And then as you get into the higher cost ones, there are less copies of them. Nice art on these. I like the art. Here are our monsters. Again, number of maneuver you need to defeat it and the amount of influence they give you. So the way that these creatures work is when you defeat them, they go into your discard pile, just like a card you would buy from a market. And then you can actually play them from your hand later in the game, gaining whatever resources on them. And then also gaining whatever special effect is on them. And then during the course of the game, you can also essentially cash them in for their influence. So when you defeat this Kraken, you don't immediately get this three influence. You get the card and then later on you can turn the card in for those three influence. But of course you won't be able to play it for the rest of the game. Here are the specialty market cards. So this is one of the special markets. You can tell because it has the V and then another separate market as the R. And then some more reference cards. You may have noticed that the cards themselves are not quite standard size. These are, are a little bit larger, although they are very nice cardstock. They're not linen, but they are thicker than normal. But because they are larger, that's maybe gonna cause an issue when you, if you're the type of person who likes to sleeve their cards. This is not a standard card size. So you're gonna have to find something a little different. Then we have the little expansion that was included. So this is uh, optional material, but you can purchase these cards while in the, the T sector. And again, that's why they have the letter on them. And then the status cards are placed faced up in front of you and you can use their effect once per round. So these are like additional powers that you can get throughout the course of the game by purchasing these cards. So this one gives you extra maneuver when you're specifically defending. Extra credits when you're reinforcing a sector and so on. So a nice little expansion. I like anything where they give you sort of um, unique player powers or allow you to adjust your player powers. And then in the back here we have the two Kickstarter ships. So these are not included unless you have the, the Kickstarter edition. Although Gray Fox is really good about um, having their exclusive material available after the fact. So I'm fairly certain you're gonna be able to find it if you do want them. And then finally, we have a few extra cards in the game. Look like maybe special power cards or maybe event cards. Okay, here are secret agenda cards. Another little expansion. So of course, optional. 
and you're going to get one of these um, and then you can play them essentially for their power once per game. So that's it. That's everything you get in a copy of Tortuga 2199 from Gray Fox Games.